Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. Now today I'm looking at a distro for the Raspberry Pi that makes it look like a macOS system. Now it's been produced by Pi Labs in collaboration with Grey Duck, and as you can see it's a very good copy, down to the minute detail. It is in fact a skin on top of Raspbian. Taking a look on the desktop, we've got the hard disk just like the macOS system. Now looking at the folders, you can see it's even structured like macOS. Now a quick mention before I go on. My Raspberry Pi is overclocked, so if I head on over to file system and boot, you'll see in my config.txt file, you'll see I've overclocked the CPU to 2100 GHz and the GPU to 700 GHz. Now I do recommend you do this as it will help your system run a lot smoother. So along the top, just like Mac OS, we've got a notifications icon, and we can indeed switch off notifications, and individually by application type. And I'm happy to say Workspaces also works. All you have to do is click on your middle mouse button, and up pops a menu to add a workspace. Click on it again and you can switch between workspaces. And familiar to all Mac users, we've got the search icon. And this also works flawlessly and it's pretty quick. Now the next thing on the Mac is the username. And like the Mac, we can log out and hibernate and shut down the system from here. Okay, so we've got a calendar, we've got a volume adjustment, and under the battery icon, we've got our battery status for my keyboard and my mouse. Next we've got the icon for our network, so we've got access to all our Ethernet, Wi-Fi, VPN services. Now the other thing we've got is the Bluetooth icon, so we can add and remove devices. Now the last thing on the menu is something you won't find on the Mac OS system. And it's a little application that allows you to tune up or tune down your CPU frequency straight from your desktop. It's similar to the feature on Raspbian X, the Windows-like distro I reviewed earlier this month. Now my favourite feature of this distro is the Mac-like menu on the bottom of the screen. Now first thing on there is the panel. Now this will actually toggle on and off your top menu panel. And of course we've got trash. And again, clicking on settings gives you a very similar layout to the macOS system. So for example, you can change your top panel settings. Change it to vertical. And back again. We can change row size, the number of rows, and the length of the row. And it's all done very quickly and conveniently. So it gives you maximum flexibility depending on how you're using the system. And just like the real Mac, we can add and remove items from the top panel. So let's say I want to add CPU frequency to the top panel. I just click on the plus symbol to the side here. That'll bring up a submenu and I just select CPU frequency monitor. And you should see the frequency display appear in the top right hand corner of the panel. So there's loads to choose from here so you can customize it to your heart's desire. And sticking to the Mac theme, we're using the software icon for adding and removing software. Now keep in mind you do need an internet connection for this to update its software listings. So this is your standard software repository for Raspbian. And we can do a search for the software we need, let's say Kodi. And it pops up with a nice little description on the bottom. And as usual we've got loads of categories and lots of software to choose from. Now here's an example of the detail they've gone to. You've even got a scientific view of the calculator. And of course you've got terminal for all your terminal needs. And for graphics we've got our GIMP editor. Now I was surprised at how zippy and quickly this came up. And when you use it, you'll notice it's very responsive. Now that's quite impressive considering this is a graphics tool. So that's a huge thumbs up from me. And LibreOffice is equally as zippy and quick. No problems here. Now on the menu bar, you've got two options of media player. You've got the VLC and you've got Parole Media Player. I personally prefer VLC. Now the one thing I found pretty impressive was the maps. Now bearing in mind this is a Raspberry Pi. I found the maps feature to be very responsive. Changing map modes was impressively quick. And zooming in was just as impressive. You can get down to some pretty good detail in a short time. Okay, so the other top feature we've got is Chromium the Media Edition. So as we all know, this lets us view our Amazon, Netflix, YouTube, all without screen tearing and any issues. And I tested it up to 1080p and it ran flawlessly. So another great implementation there. And just to confirm, full screen works just as well. No issues to report here. Now the other great thing they've ported over from the Mac system is the launchpad. Now I was bowled over by this. Just like the real thing, it lists all your applications in logical order. So you've got your Steam, you've got your RetroPie, you've got your DOSBox. That's half your gaming needs there. And of course you've got Metroid, Counter-Strike 2 and Minecraft Pi. You've got your older Mac 9 emulator. Now you've also got the Windows 98 emulator. Oh and I've just seen the SNES emulator. Could these guys have packed any more in? So if we take a quick look at the old Mac emulator, you'll find it takes a bit of time to load up, so I've speeded this up. And there you go guys, we're in. Brings back a lot of memories this. Now there's one thing worth mentioning, and that is that not all the apps work from the launchpad. So if you come across one that doesn't, just launch it from the top menu here. So guys, as you can see, it's a pretty comprehensive little package. It's got everything you need, and even more. Features wise, it's identical to iRaspian, which like I said I featured earlier on the channel. 
So guys, if you found this video helpful, give us a like and maybe even consider subscribing for more great content to follow.